So the goal of the renal system is to produce urine. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce some basic concepts about urine formation so that as we go through the different parts of the nephron that you'll need to memorize for the MCAT, you can keep the big picture in mind and not forget what this whole process really is for. And so I'll also talk about some of the basic concepts that you should keep in mind as we go through the different parts of the nephron, how the different parts are different from one another and why. Okay, so each part of the nephron is gonna have a different function in terms of what they absorb or reabsorb from the filtrate and what they secrete or if they secrete anything. And the reason for these changes is because different sections of the nephron have different permeabilities. So the permeabilities can be with respect to water. So some parts of the nephron are really permeable to water and others are not permeable to water at all. So they can't absorb any of the water from the filtrate when the filtrate is passing through that section of the nephron. They have different permeabilities to different electrolytes as well as things like glucose. So what this means is that some parts of the nephron are intrinsically permeable to some of these components, while others are not. So here in this image to the right, you can actually see the entire nephron and how different sections of the nephron have different permeabilities. So what is in purple is uh, what is actually reabsorbed at that section. So here, for example, we have the PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, all of this stuff is actually reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule, and all this stuff that is in yellow is actually secreted into the filtrate as the filtrate moves from Bowman space into the PCT and so on and so forth. So other parts of the nephron are going to have different permeabilities. For example, here at this point, the descending loop of Henle is very permeable to water, but that's not the case for the ascending loop of Henle. It is not permeable to water at all. So that explains what they actually do to the filtrate, and we'll cover those in a lot more detail as we move on, but I just wanted to introduce these concepts right now so that you can keep them in mind as we try to memorize the small details. So we talked about the intrinsic permeability of the nephron, but the nephron is also able to change its permeability to water and salts as needed. So they usually do that in response to hormones such as ADH and aldosterone, but this is also something that's really important to think about. And really the nephron's ability to change its permeability based on our body's needs is what makes sure that we don't have to drink gallons and gallons of water every day in order to stay hydrated. So for example, if you drink a lot of water in a day, you notice that your urine is gonna be very clear, very light yellow color. Um, so no problem if you drink a ton of water, then your kidneys are just gonna get rid of what they don't need. If you drink too little water, then the kidneys have the ability to concentrate the urine so that it extracts as much water as it can, and you'll notice that your urine is a darker shade of yellow, and that's because most of the water has been removed. And then even in terms of salt reabsorption, how it deals with salts, have you, you know, if you have a bag of salty chips, you'll notice that oftentimes that will make you thirsty, and um, it actually has a lot more sodium than we need, and your kidney actually has to get rid of that extra salt, but in order to get rid of salt, it also has to get rid of water. And so you have to end up drinking a lot of water to replace the water that you lose because of all that salty stuff that you ate. So the bottom line here is that your nephron is able to change its permeability to salts and water based on your body's needs so that we can maintain homeostasis, but you know we don't have to drink tons and tons of water every day in order to stay hydrated. So keep this concept in mind as we move through the different sections of the nephron and make sure to understand this concept because it's very relevant for the MCAT.